Hello everyone, my name is Nu and today I'm going to be introducing you to my tattoo jacket. My tattoo jacket um, is a denim jacket that I started embroidering on a couple of years ago. Basically when I started getting into embroidery uh, there was just a bunch of different projects I wanted to do and I don't really like embroidering on you know like cotton or whatever and putting it in an embroidery hoop especially when it was just you know little designs that I just liked the sound of and so I decided to come up with the concept of this like tattoo jacket mainly because I wanted to cover the whole thing in embroidery so it looked kind of like a tattoo sleeve or something so I've been working on it for a few years and I feel like this is one of those projects that I'm going to be working on for many, many more years to come. I just kind of pick it up whenever I have an idea and um, I think it's coming along nicely so far. Let's start with a quick tour of what the work that I've done already. So the first thing is this snake, which I embroidered because I'm a very proud Slytherin. <laughs> It's a combination of embroidery uh, floss or thread and also acrylic paint. I like the idea of, uh, what is it called? Gosh, I have to look up this word. I mean mixed media. I like the idea of mixed media. Here's a crescent moon because I'm a cancer baby and also because I, I don't know. <laughs> I have two moons on the jacket actually. The first one's the crescent moon and then this one's like a more detailed minty kind of green full moon. I really like the swirling colors and textures on this one, but I'm not too sure it actually reads moony. Maybe it looks more like a different planet or just abstract. <laughs> By the way, it's meant to be a full moon. And then this is um, an embroidery I did of my cat Clyde, who passed away a few years ago. Um, as you can see, he's purple for some reason, but also I've done his name in acrylic paint and like a gradient rainbow. I think that looked really pretty. I'm really pleased with how this one came out. This next one's a good example of how stuff is always kind of work in progress because um, you can't really see the design too well. I need to go through and thicken up some parts with embroidery floss and go over it again with different types of paint. But basically this is kind of like a silhouette of um, Jung Yen with a uh, misheard lyric from one of his songs. I recommend listening to She Is by Jung Yen if you want a nice chill song recommendation. I smeared acrylic paint all over the jacket in different parts just because I think it looked interesting and visual and pretty. I really like how this pride rainbow turned out on the shoulder. I thought it would be cool to have this kind of rainbow pattern on the part of the jacket that was already curved. <laughs> this one I embroidered a few years ago because I really enjoyed the money exchanges uh, performance in Snatch Game. <laughs> I will not hesitate to put thou in a ditch because Maya Angelou ain't no punk bitch. <laughs> this one's another lyric from a song that I love, but um, it's meant to be like a skull with flowers growing out of the eye holes, and I don't think it translated too well. But I also embroidered this at like a really <laughs> monumental kind of turning point in my life. So I'm a little bit reluctant to pick it out, even though I'm not completely happy with the end design. This has a little hidden message in the rainbow. I really like this type of embroidery where it just looks kind of like a mess of stitches or rainbow or floss or whatever, but there's actually <laughs> something hidden in there. Ah, so here's another idea. This is a Spider-Man embroidery I did on just a piece of cotton, and um, originally I had it in a hoop. And I just wanted it somewhere like more permanent, I guess. For me, I love the idea of wearing, you know, art as fashion or whatever. So I've been embroidering this Spider-Man embroidery onto my denim jacket. <laughs> as you can see, I'm only halfway through 
Because doing this like satin stitch all the way around has been taking me so long, especially because it's in a really fiddly spot on the pocket. And I'm trying not to like sew the pocket shut. So, uh, this is a very long term work in progress. <laughs> Uh, I just get fed up of doing the same satin whip stitch type thing over and over, so that's why that's taking so long. Okay, so let's finally get into this WandaVision embroidery. I said I tend to do the same sort of process every time um, I embroider something onto this jacket, and that's just grab the closest pen or marker or whatever I have that will mark up the jacket and sketch out my design on there. And I have the unfortunate habit of trusting that the embroidery is going to cover up the pen. And it's not always the case, as you'll see in, the, <laughs> in this project. Um, but I guess that's the fun of the idea behind this whole tattoo jacket thing, in that I just I don't want to put too much pressure on myself if it's just meant to be something you know, artistic whenever I feel like doing something with my hands and I don't want to start a whole new project or hunt on new materials. So, you know, I really encourage you if you're a creative person and you sometimes feel like a little bit stuck to have something like this on the back burner, just like a little project that you can whip out whenever you feel like it or if you need something and, um, It'll be good to go and you don't have to put too much stress on yourself to create. Okay, so why is this a WandaVision inspired embroidery? Well, this is a quote from the TV series that I, I don't know, it really hit me and I, I really identified with it or it made me feel something. So I really wanted to embroider it somewhere and I was thinking about doing like a bull cap or a bracelet or a jacket or something and nothing was really kind of calling to me and then I remembered my tattoo jacket. The whole point of it was to be able to just like whip it out and, and work on whatever project I wanted to. So, oh my gosh, I was not expecting to be into WandaVision. I love Marvel and I'm like a big Team Stark person in that I like really enjoy Iron Man and Spider-Man and that kind of thing. That's not to say that I don't like enjoy Captain America's <laughs> sort of side of stuff. It's just my preferences with the Iron Man and Spider-Man sort of stories. And I really didn't like Wanda. I didn't think she was like a bad character or that she didn't bring value to the series. She just wasn't my favorite character and I didn't like a lot of her kind of character arc, story, whatever. And obviously WandaVision was an opportunity for Marvel to really kind of expand on her. And I still am not like a huge fan of Wanda as a character, but man was WandaVision a good series. I mean, I thought so. I know a lot of people have, you know, various criticisms for it, which is, you know, like all things. But um, for me, I really identified with what Wanda was going through, you know, this whole process of grief. I mean, anyone who's watched the series, I'm trying not to <laughs> spoil too much, but you know, anyone who's watched WandaVision knows that there's some really intelligent sort of um, imagery and, and, you know, symbolism and the different stages of Wanda's grief, you know, for all that she's gone through in, in the previous movies and, um, I really appreciated how real some of that felt and, and you know, like I said before, it made me feel things, which I think is the strength or point of media to, or, you know, art or creating things, you know, whether that's cinema or creating things with your hands on like a really small scale, like what me and Melissa are doing on this channel. When the scene comes around where Paul Bettany says this particular line, um, but what is grief if not love persevering? I, yeah, oh my gosh, this line, it was one of those things where the, the second you heard it, it was like a punch in the gut and you're like, oh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I see myself in this, or I, I feel myself in this, and I feel really seen, and I'm, I can relate to this big time. So, um, I heard that Paul Bettany was involved in creating this particular line, and hats off. It, it was it was a doozy. It was a good one.
So coming back to the embroidery, this is a Posca paint pen that I'm using to kind of define that circle shape that I put down originally. Um, and I wanted to, like, if you look at this embroidery, it, it kind of gets lost. It's really hard to distinguish what the writing says. So I was trying to help that along with this gold pen. I also thought about getting some like white acrylic and going around the letters that way. But I decided to try this gold first. <laughs> and in hindsight, it starts looking a little Iron Man y, like the red and gold. And I was going more for like a Scarlet Witch thing. But I also felt like if I put any more red in this design, it would completely lose the script in there. In the spirit of doing what feels right, <laughs> or what I feel like doing, I just kept working away at this with a gold pen. And this is what happened. <laughs> And then I came in with some sequins and beads and stuff and I started filling in around the letters hoping that that would help to make the script pop out and then I decided I hated that and I unpicked it. <laughs> and then my final plan, what I ended up doing was uh, sequining around the outside in these like orangey goldy type colours. And then putting some stars in there because I wanted it to look like magic because you know Wanda, Scarlet Witch and this is how it turned out and I'm pretty pleased it looks messy because I <laughs> I just scrolled on the jacket with a fabric marker and didn't end up covering it all with the embroidery so that's the lesson from this kids um don't use fabric marker to sketch your designs onto your jacket <laughs> But yeah, if, 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 if this inspires anyone to start their own kind of tattoo jacket, I would adore and love to see that. So please tag us on, you know, Instagram and Twitter and all that kind of thing. If, if that, if that ever happens, um, I would be pretty stoked. And that's, uh, that's the video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed watching my speed embroidery and thank you so much. Have a good week. Bye.